We're about two weeks away from getting anything out of the garden. Usually mid-April is when we can expect to get stuff like mustard greens, baby kale, arugula, but we're not there yet. We're in quarantine. I'm not going to the store, so I'm cooking through my pantry. What do I got hiding in the back? Two 2019 vintage spaghetti squash. They've been back there patiently waiting and their time has come. So we're going with a fridge slash pantry clean out theme. I've got a rind of Parmesan, the dregs of a bottle of nice balsamic, and some miscellaneous nuts and seeds. First, I wanna say spaghetti squash is a very underappreciated vegetable. The low carb crowd has picked up on it, but I feel like they're mostly just putting beef chili and spaghetti sauce on top. They're not really taking it to where it needs to go. When it's cooked with attention, it's a delicious flavor and a super interesting texture. A little sweet, but not overwhelming. So today we've got spaghetti squash, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, about two tablespoons each mixed. I've got a rind of Parmesan, olive oil, salt, chili flake, black pepper, a really nice aged balsamic, and that's it. To get started, we're gonna chop the spaghetti squash down. Breaking the squash down into smaller chunks like this makes it easier to shred the flesh off later on. I'm scooping out the seeds and gunk and throwing them in a bowl to toss with a little bit of olive oil and salt. We want the sheet tray to be nice and hot. So when we lay out the squash, we get a nice sizzle. We want to cook this fast and hot. As always guys, watch your fingies when you're throwing these on the sheet tray. This thing's ripping hot. Once we put these in the oven, we're gonna check back in about 15 minutes. In the meantime, we're gonna get the rest of our salad ready. Our dressing is super simple. It's just gonna be equal parts balsamic and olive oil. This balsamic is aged about three years, so it has a really nice syrupy texture to it. If you wanted to at home, you could add some sugar to just an off the shelf balsamic to sweeten it up a little bit, or you could cook down balsamic for about 15 minutes by half. It's a cliche, but when you've got nice stuff, you don't have to work super hard to make food taste good. So I keep some good balsamic on hand. I used to not really give a care about balsamic, but someone gave me this and it really changed my mind. I've used olive oil and balsamic as my salad dressing for the past six months. And we eat a lot of salad. So we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna mix this up right before we pour it over. The syrupy balsamic acts as its own emulsifier. We don't need to add anything like honey or mustard here. Our next garnish is gonna be Parmesan. We're just gonna grab the wedge that has been sitting in my fridge for the last two weeks. And we're gonna grate it on a box grater. This is not Parmigiano Reggiano. This is just grocery store brand Parmesan. You don't wanna have the larger chunks when you don't have super nice Parmesan. So grinding it on the smallest side of your box grater is what I recommend. A microplane will work too. I really like the texture of like a ground Parmesan though, and that's what this is. As you can see here, it's like dusty and has a little bit of crumble to it. Perfect for putting on top of salads. Once we've got our Parmesan ground, we're gonna set that aside, and then we're gonna put a 10-inch nonstick skillet over high heat. We're gonna be frying some nuts and seeds to make them taste delish, and we're gonna be adding some salt in the pan to get them nice and coated. We're gonna go in with walnuts first, because those will take the longest to brown, and they're the least likely to burn. And once we've got a little bit of color on the walnuts, they're starting to get fragrant. You can see that sizzle. We're gonna add in our pepitas or pumpkin seeds. Those are gonna puff up and create this really light, high crunchy texture for the salad that's super flavorful. Last, we're gonna be adding in our sunflower seeds. These burn really fast. We just wanna get them in the pan, toss, 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 give it maybe 15 more seconds and then pull them off heat. Throw them on a paper towel lined plate to drain them and cool them down and set those aside. It's been about 15 minutes, so we're gonna check our spaghetti squash and see how we're looking. 
These look about halfway there. I'm gonna flip them over and get some color on the other side. Just checking the temp of my oven here. It was actually 425. We're gonna turn this back up. Let's take this opportunity to do a little sidebar to talk other applications of spaghetti squash. It doesn't have to just be your paleo spaghetti substitute, which is not a very good idea and doesn't taste super good in my opinion. You can take this in a Thai direction if you wanted to, kind of substitute the green papaya for the classic Thai green papaya salad. So you would shred that up, maybe some shredded carrots in there with some fish sauce, sugar, a little bit of lime juice, chopped peanuts, and cilantro. And then you've all of a sudden you've got a delicious Thai spaghetti squash salad. I also just recommend roasting these off with a little bit of salt and pepper, cooling them down and keeping them in your fridge for weekday salads. We roast off some salmon, put it on greens with this spaghetti squash shredded over top with that simple balsamic dressing you saw me make earlier. We've been eating that once or twice a week for the last three months. It's just good, delicious, healthful food that has a lot of flavor. So don't underestimate spaghetti squash. Next time you're at the grocery store, whatever that might be, grab one or, tell you, <laughs> or order one on Instacart, get it delivered, roast it off, keep it in the fridge. All right, back to the oven. We've been cooking this squash for 25 minutes now and it's nice and tender. The way I tell when spaghetti squash is done is I take my finger and just put a little bit of pressure in between the flesh of the vegetable and the skin. This recipe makes about four servings, so two people could have it for dinner and then lunch the next day, or you could just do it for a dinner party of four. We're gonna throw the squash and a little bit of salt and olive oil into this bowl. We just wanna get the squash seasoned up. A little bit of fat and salt will make the squash just taste really good on its own. This is gonna serve as a base for our salads. We wanna make sure that it's seasoned properly. We're gonna come up next with our fried seed blend. Again, this is walnut, sunflower seed, pumpkin seed. And I'm just kinda of crumbling them on top. We wanna to be really liberal here. These salty fried seeds and nuts really make the dish. Combination of sweet balsamic and salty nuts tastes pretty good. We're gonna come up next with a generous sprinkle of Parmesan. Do not be stingy with this. We definitely wanna bring that cheesy, funky, salty flavor to this dish. And then to kind of bring a cacio e pepe flavor, we're gonna come back with a liberal amount of black pepper and what the hell, some chili flake as well. We've got our simple dressing of nice olive oil and aged balsamic, and we're gonna be generous with this as well. Is it good? Yeah. If you forgot about spaghetti squash, now's the time to say hello. Give the old girl the respect she deserves. She's a key ingredient to the good life. If you like this video, hit subscribe. Tell a friend. See you next time.